Hi, I'm Miranda Kristovnikov and this is They Didn't Teach Me That. I've been contacted by a new teacher who's in desperate need of some advice on his big concern, how to be a form tutor. I've got his plea for help on this MP4 player and I'm going to play it to some experts, including a professional football manager. Let's see if they can help. I'm on my way to meet my first expert, but in the meantime, take a look at the message I received. Uh, hi, my name's Daniel Williams, and I'm an NQT at Old Grange High School in Rottenstall. And I've got a few questions, if you could help me with uh, the role of the form tutor, because it's my first time in charge of um, a form. It's a year seven form. And I was first of all wondering about how to build really good relationships with pupils, especially um, those maybe really quiet year seven girls I've got at the moment who the only thing I hear them say is yes sir in the morning and yes sir in the afternoon and I'm having a bit of trouble drawing them out of the shell a little bit. Also I was wondering about having only 15 minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon, how we can look out for any signs that they're not happy at school or at home in such a short space of time where you've got to do all the admin tasks as well. And basically any other advice you can give me on how to run a successful happy form would be great. Thank you very much. So the main issues are how to draw the quieter pupils out of themselves and how to fit in your pastoral duties when you've only got a limited time with the pupils. And my first expert should be able to help on both fronts. To start my quest, I've come here to Dagenham to meet Andy Buck, lecturer, TDA top bod and head teacher at Joe Richardson Community School. I've got a few questions on if you could help me with uh, the role of the form tutor because it's my first time in charge of um, a form. So any general points that might help Daniel out? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think he's absolutely right. It's quite a challenge. Being a form teacher is a very, very difficult thing um, to, to manage with the short amount of time that you have, but it can be done. Um, in terms of the admin side of it, if you can get yourself really well organised, use little routines and systems, get other kids to help with handing things out, get them used to routines in terms of how you do the register so that's done quickly and efficiently, um, give you then that little bit of time every morning where you can spend some time interacting with the children. And what other things can a form tutor do to build up that rapport with the children? Um, there's the basic job and then for the people that want to go the little extra, there's, there's, there's so many opportunities for things that you can do. If a form teacher says, guys, why don't we just before Christmas go and have a little trip to the cinema one evening or something like that. The kids will look forward to it for weeks before, they'll really enjoy it and they'll see their form teacher putting themselves out a little bit and actually that can pay dividends in the long run in terms of the relationship between the form teacher, you know, and, and also, you know, going back to what Daniel was saying about the, the shy girls, the walk to the cinema or the meeting, that's your chance to have that little conversation with those girls and get to know some of the students who normally you might not have the time to, to, uh, to see in that way. So if another teacher has a problem with one of the students in your tutor group, um, do you have a responsibility there? Whilst the form teacher has got the role of making sure that children in their class are performing and are happy and comfortable and are getting the best out of school, they're not responsible for overall management of behaviour in different classroom areas. That's the responsibility either of the head of year or um, in most schools increasingly now the responsibility of that particular department. A form teacher who sees maybe there's a pattern of feedback coming back that there's problems in different subjects, then that might be when the form teacher wants to say, well, what I'm going to do is put the child on some kind of a monitoring report so they can keep an eye on the situation. But a form teacher's got to be very careful that they don't start to assume the responsibility of solving other people's problems for them. Brilliant, Andy. Thanks very much for your time. You're a busy man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very okay. much. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> like being a form tutor is a pretty complex role. I wonder what Daniel's going to make of the suggestion to arrange a group outing to the cinema. I certainly didn't have any tutors like that. Well, it was a great start meeting Andy, but I'm starting to think that maybe managing a form has some parallels with managing a team. So with that in mind, I've arranged to meet Barnet FC manager Paul Fairclough, who used to be a teacher himself. So Paul, you used to be a teacher, but now you work as a football manager. 
Um, what are the similarities between the two jobs? The, the communication is the big similarity and the organisation, you know, as a, as a teacher you have to be organised in the classroom but to be a successful teacher you've also got to have good communication skills so that's where it comes in really. And what about bonding with the players that you're working with? Any good tips to, to bond with them? If you're a form teacher you've got to create an environment of mutual trust within the classroom and that's what I have to create within the change room. Mutual trust and respect, not just from me but for each other. And how do you create that trust? You have to have a, almost an unconditional love for your players and, and, and for your pupils as well. You know, I mean, kids know and, and footballers know, if, if, first of all, if you're genuine and honest. So you have to be honest and you really have to, have to believe in them. Um, they can be testing at times, but you have to start by having that sort of uh, bond with the, with, with the children or with the players. They have to know that you're, you're, you're fair and they have to know that you, you know, there is a, a side of you that will bring the discipline in as well. And what happens if you're working with, with quieter individuals? I mean, they sound like a bit of a rowdy bunch out there, but I bet you've got some quieter ones that you need to bring out of their shells a bit more. How do you do that? Children, most of all, and, and, and you and I, we've all got comfort zones, you know, and a lot of children are in comfort zones where they're frightened to express themselves for fear of ridicule. So I, I challenge my players all the time to, to step out of those comfort zones. You know, I encourage the people to speak up in meetings, you know, I'll, I'll get them to stand up and I'll get them to voice their an opinion. And if you've got a scenario where the team isn't doing very well, it's losing all its matches, how do you keep morale high? How do you build it up? Each player has a little book and we sit around in a circle and the book gets passed around and you write something positive about that player and then you close the book and pass it on to the next person. So after it's gone around 20 times, the book goes back to the original person and his self-esteem is going to be hit 20 times with, with positive you know, positive statement. So he's gonna, he's gonna read that. Yeah, he's gonna read that, and and he, he and he's, he's, it's gonna help him. It's gonna encourage him. Some very, very practical tips there. Thanks very much, Paul. Thanks Thank you very time. much. Thanks. Well, I'm pleased to say I wasn't too far off the mark comparing those two jobs. Paul had some really useful things to say about the psychology of managing a group of people. I found him quite inspirational. I'm just about to head up north to present my results to Daniel, but I'd quite like to speak to somebody who is a form tutor before then. The guy I've got in mind is called Francis Gilbert, author of Yob Nation. I haven't got time to pay him a visit, but I have got time to make a quick phone call. Hello? Hi Francis, it's Miranda from Teachers TV. Hi there. Um, I wanted to ask you some questions on the role, role of a form tutor. I've um, got a teacher called Daniel. He's an NQT. Now, how difficult is it to be a form tutor in your first year of teaching? I think it's very difficult indeed, particularly if you're the only form tutor. Um, you can have a really rough ride if you don't know the kind of ropes properly. So when you're working with a class of children um, and you've got some quiet ones, how do you get those individuals to come out of themselves a bit? Um, the way to do this is to structure your discussions so that you um, say to the pupils, um, I'd like you to discuss this particular question in pairs and then I will pick upon a particular pair to uh, give their answers. And that gives you much more control over who um, you think uh, you want to, to speak to. And what about ways of getting the, the children to trust you? This is a big one and you need to develop um, trust over um, a long time, over a few months I would say. Um, you need to set very clear guidelines and rules so that they know where they stand with you. And then I would advise you, if you can, to get in early in the mornings um, before everyone arrives and make uh, the classroom a bit of a kind of home from home so that um, you can really uh, make them kind of welcome and when they come into the classroom have a smile on your face, say hi there, how are you doing? So you kind of develop that kind of relationship, that friendly relationship with them. So just actually spending some time with the children? Absolutely. It's all about um, getting to know them a bit better than an ordinary teacher would do. And actually that can be the most enjoyable aspect of being a form tutor, is that you actually really get to know them as people. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Francis. Thanks a lot. OK, bye-bye. 
Well, all in all, I think we've got some great advice for Daniel, but uh, time to head up to Lancashire to see what he thinks. Be waiting for me inside. I've got all the information for him stored on this, so let's go and see what he thinks. While Daniel takes a look at that, let's just remind ourselves of where my journey's taken me on this topic. Firstly, I started off in East London with Andy Buck, and he suggested ways that Daniel might buy himself time by getting the pupils to help out during registration. He also suggested the role involves monitoring the pupils in your form, but not necessarily handing out punishments. Next, I spoke to Paul Fairclough, who suggested that Daniel's priority should be to create an environment of mutual trust and respect, and suggested ways to bring the quieter kids out of their shells, such as by getting the pupils to make positive comments about each other. Finally, Francis Gilbert gave me the form tutor's point of view, extolling the virtues of building better relationships with your form by spending more time in the form room. I think Daniel's just about finished. Let's see what he thought of that. So, was that useful information? Anything in there that you can take away? Um, yeah, I think there's lots and lots of useful stuff there. You had a specific question about building stronger relationships with, with some of the pupils. Now, do you feel better informed to tackle that now? Um, well, I like the idea of getting them to do some of the admin tasks, like giving out letters and things, because I would just freeze up more time to get round on a Monday morning and just pop and see how everyone's doing and things. And um, I like the idea of the, the, the final speaker who said that he had a time where, say in the morning, so it's not outside school, it's still inside school, but a time where you could just go around and just say, you know, how are you? And f for the people who maybe aren't confident enough to speak out in registration, do it before registration, I think that was quite good. And the quieter pupils that are in your form, was there any stuff in there that would help you draw them out of their shells a little bit more? I think maybe. The idea, when the man said about organising trips and things to give me something to look forward to. I was thinking instead of a trip, maybe something like a form end of term party or something where we could give everyone and make sure it delegated out the roles so everyone had a role and everyone could bring something to it and, and contribute something. It'd mean the quieter people had a chance to contribute without feeling pressured or forced to speak out in a class, you know, I think that'd be quite good. And did you agree with all the advice that was there? Uh, it was just a minor thing that Andy said when he said that it's not the form teacher's responsibility or duty to kind of, um, not discipline, but you know, deal with issues that come about outside the classroom, outside of the form classroom. Um, I think, in a way, or from what I've seen so far in like the eight months I've been here, um, if there's a problem with a pupil, people will go and tell the form teacher and, and, you know, the form teachers generally say, don't worry, I'll have a word, because the form teacher's like the contact twice daily. So it is your responsibility? Well, I kind of think it is, yeah. yeah. Time will tell though. Great, well, I'm really glad some of that was useful. Good luck with everything. Okay. Nice Thanks to meet you. Take care. Hopefully, Daniel is now better prepared to be a form tutor. If you want to watch this programme on your own MP4 player, you'll be able to download it as a podcast at the end of the series from the Teachers TV website. But if you can't wait until then, don't forget you can now watch and download the programme via broadband. Next time I'll be sorting out the problems of another new teacher, but until then, goodbye.